In today's tutorial, we're going to work on the Wee Mermaid costume, and this is for babies that are 12 to 18 months of age. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host, Mikey. Today we're going to work on the Wee Mermaid crochet costume, and this is for babies that are 12 to 18 months of age. This is more of a costume, more of a photo prop, more of a novelty item, really quite cool. This only requires one ball of Handicrafter cotton yarn, and it's a big ball. And what we're going to do today is that we're going to cover everything from doing this waist area here, tapering down to the tail, the tail, and then we're going to finish it off with the seashell top just like so. This is not a hard pattern to do. In order to do this, you'll need a five millimeter size H crochet hook today in order to complete. So let's examine this a little more carefully and what we have is like a cocoon shape. We're gonna go continuous in circles and if you look really carefully at this photo, you're gonna notice some really interesting stitching technique right here in the waist area. We're then gonna taper down and then we're gonna uh, do the tail and then we're gonna sew it to this uh, position right here. This is really not a hard pattern. There is no diagrams involved because it is so simple. This is not a very big project and in actual fact, it'll probably go really quickly. So let's begin. Let's grab your five millimeter size H crochet hook today and let's grab your Burnett Handicrafter yarn just like so. It's a big ball and you only need one of these in order to complete. So let's begin by starting off with a slip knot and remember this never counts as one. I'm gonna show you a technique in order to help you do the first area here because you don't want this chain to be twisting. So we need a total of 90 to make this happen. So I'm gonna just do 10. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, seven, eight, eight, nine, and ten. Okay, so what I have is I have ten. I'm gonna take this off and I'm gonna insert my, my hook into the first one that we had started with down here and then I'm gonna put this one back on. And what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna continue to chain and I'm gonna go like 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15, go all the way to 90, and what's gonna happen is that it's gonna prevent this uh, chain from twisting, and then when I have my 90 done, I'm gonna pull through. So I'll leave the rest for you. Remember, I'm at 15 if you've been following along, and please get your chain 90 done now. So I now have my 90 on here, and I still have this attached here, and then once I have my 90, all I'm just gonna do then is that I'm chained my 90, and then we just join with a slip stitch. So just pull through that one, and this one, and now you have a complete circle just like this. Okay, so that's how we get started and this will be the circumference and the baby will sit inside this circle. So let's move along to round number one. So in round number one, we're gonna start doing some shell work and there's gonna be a single crochet, skipping two chains, and then the third one, we're gonna do five double crochets into that one, skip two chains, and then single crochet. And we're gonna do a repeat pattern. So we skip two chains, five doubles in the next, skip two chains, single in the next. That's what we're gonna do for round number one. So if you didn't do it my way, make sure this chain is not twisted in any way. It'll make a difference on the edge look. So chain up one and then single crochet into the same one that you did the attaching with just like that. Okay, so just like I promised, so you're gonna skip two single crochet or two chains, so one, two, and then the next one. What I recommend is that you just turn it over and get the back loop only of the chain. It makes a nicer look. So just one strand in the back loop and you're gonna do five double crochets. So one, and two, and three, four, and five. Just like that. So now I want you to skip two more chains. So just coming back down. So one and two skip and then go into the third one for a single crochet. And we're gonna continue that same idea going all the way across your chain and, and back and it comes back around. So just simply just skip two, one and two and just immediately double crochet five times into the third one over. So one and two, three, four, five. Skip two chains, so one and two go to the third one for a single crochet. Continue to repeat that same idea going all the way around. As you came all the way back around, just make sure that the top edge that you've been working with is on the outside, so make sure it's not doing any weird twists. So I've just done my final shell here, and remember that we started off with the single crochet, so you're just gonna do a slip stitch into the single crochet to conclude the circle. So make sure that there's no weird twists at this point, and we're gonna move on 
to round number two. So now we're about to create a ridge in round number two. So it has SCFL. I've never seen that before in a di in a, any kind of instructions. SCFL. That's single crochet front loop. So we're just going to chain up one and we're going to single crochet into the same one that you did the join with. So there's single crochet just like that. So all the rest of the stitches all the way around now are going to be in the front loop. So if you're new to crochet what happens is that two strands here is considered a front loop when it's closest to you and a back loop when it's uh, away from you. So there's two strands here. The first strand is the front loop. So if I just went into the one only that's a front loop and if I went into the back one it's a back loop. So in this case what we're going to do is that every stitch now going all the way around is that it's going to be a front loop single crochet. So going into the front loop only you are going to single crochet as normal. So front loop, single crochet, front loop, single crochet. Please do that all the way for round number two. And just in case anybody is still on the fence that single crochets that you had in there that's also single crochet front loop. So get everything all the way around. So there's nothing special in between each of the shells. Front loop, single crochet in each going all the way around. So I'm coming up to the very end. The very last one of the shell here is a front loop single crochet and then I'm just going to join it to the very first one that we started with. Okay so that was round number two. Let's move along to round number three. So what we're going to do for round number three is that it's actually kind of neat. So we've been doing the front loop single crochet in the last round and that's what you see here. These are all plus signs that are a single crochet. So we're going to immediately chain up three just like this. Okay and we're going to put in two more double crochets but listen you went into the front loop here. The back loop is still open. You need to play within the back loop of this row here not this row. So when we go to the do the single crochet here it's going in the back loop of this same stitch right here. Okay so it's not right over top. This one here it's going to be the back loop over here down here. This is going to cause these shell looking things to start overlapping each other to create the texture look. So that's what you have to watch out for for round number three. So let's begin to chain up three. Easy peasy no big deal. So the next two double crochets that are in the same one turn it around and you'll see that there's a ridge that is formed on the other side. These are the back loops that you see. Do you see those? So these front uh, loop single crochets are in front of this one. There's where you want to play to create the overlap effect. So the other two double crochets that you did need to come down into the back loop. So just go right into the back loop only. It's just one strand and complete the other two that you see. The first one is always going to look a little bit off and that's because we have to establish this pattern. Don't worry about it. So we're going to do what we have with the shells. So in the very top one it's the fifth one in. Sorry it's the middle one of the five. So one, two, three, four, five. Here's the middle. If you turn it around just get the back loop but you can see that it's the third one over anyway. You're going to single crochet into that one. Okay so it's just like what you already know is just that you're playing in a different space and this is going to create an overlapping shape. So we're going to then move to the next one. See the single crochet? That's where the next shell goes into. So just turn it like this and you can see and you can expose it. So there's going to be two anyway that are empty. It's the third one and that's going to have three double crochets. You have to look for key signs in order for yourself to kind of avoid counting if you can. If you can avoid counting it obviously will speed you up in crochet and experienced crocheters know that very well. So you can either skip the next two right here one, two and go to the third or you can just physically look at it and there's the third anyway and that's where you're going to single crochet. Okay so let's put in the next shell so you can see the single crochet here but you can skip two and you'll still get the middle one as well. Okay so whatever you need to do whether you need to count or whether you can just look that's completely up to you and there will be five double crochets into that. So what's going to happen is that that last round we just did is going to slightly overlap this round like so and creating ridges like scales. And so skip two, go to the third one over and that will be the single crochet anyway. Okay so continue to do that all the way around. So as you come all the way back around I've just done my single crochet in the back loop and the final. You remember how I said that there was two that started off? So you're going to go into the very same stitch in the back and you're going to complete two double crochets to finalize off that round. Okay and then just join it to the top of the first one of the chain three that you started with. Okay this is considered the back of the outfit right where you're seeing it right here. So let's move along to round number four. 
So in round number four there's a lot of instruction there but don't let it confuse you because it's not as hard as it looks. And what we need to do is that we're going to do again we're gonna do the front loop single crochet but wait don't go anywhere. What we're gonna do is that when we get to the tops of these that you see here okay the tops of the ridges and you see that there's a shell here the top one here we're going to pin this down with a, with a, a single crochet when we go to do it. So these are gonna be pinned at each point in order to create a really interesting look. So let's uh, show me show you how to do that. So we're gonna chain up one and it says one single crochet into the same space as the join. No big deal. Okay so the next two okay are going to be front loop single crochets. So one these are on the double crochets that you see. And the next one is going to be the single crochet here. So before you go anywhere what I need you to do is that you just push it back like this and look for the middle one of the five and you're gonna go into the back loop of the middle one of the five. Okay so this is the last ridge. Do you see that? There's single crochets going to the back loop of that one and in the single crochet of the other one in behind I want you to go into the front loop. And what that's and then complete it off as a single crochet. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna pin it down so that it holds it down. So we're gonna continue along the back one for the next five it says. So one in the single crochet uh, front loop. This is two, three, four, and five. And look you're back to where the single crochet is here. So just push it back the middle one of the five just follow it up go into the back loop of that one of the ridge and then go into the front loop of that single crochet in behind and just put it together and that pins it down in order to hold it together to have a really nice effect at this point. It's harder to see on this camera because we're looking straight at it but once you look at it from a side perspective that you'll see scales that are forming. So just uh, as a recap so in the front loops only single crochet so one, two, three, four and five and look at that you're back at the single crochet and then just push this back look for the middle one of the five so right there get the back loop of that one get the front loop of the other one behind and put it together. So as you can imagine this ridge that we're creating now in behind because we're doing front loops only at this point you're gonna be using that again in the future. Please continue that same idea going all the way across. Okay this is where I started and I can see it kind of looks abnormal here because that's the slip stitching that is completely normal and if you have that don't even think twice about it. So you still want to continue then to uh, pin that last one down. So remember just looking for the middle one of the five just following it straight up going into the back loop of that one front loop of the other one in the behind attach it and then you only have two left in the front loop single crochet before you join it to the top of the first one that you had started with just like that. Okay that completes off round number four. So let's move on to round number five. Now I want to just educate you a little bit. So we have the shells here and in the last one that time that we did shells the shells moved over in between. Okay do you see that? And so if you can remember that this makes this pattern really quite easy to follow. So when I go to start this one I'm in the top of a shell here. So therefore I have to start off and I chain one and I want to put in um, some single crochets in here. So I'm gonna single crochet into the same space okay as the back loop or actually in this case it's just the regular one and what I want to do is that the next time is that do you see this? This is like the between two shells right in the middle. I'm gonna fold it forward and that one in the middle is gonna have my five double crochets. So one, two, three, four and five and then I'm just continuing along and remember I'm not playing on this last ridge I'm paying, playing on the back loops of these of this other one. Okay so this keeps us raised up. So I can either skip two, one and two or I can just physically look at it and it's the middle one of the five and I'm just gonna do a single crochet in that back loop and that'll keep it nice and pinned. So if you can remember the way that you started is that there's only two ways to start these shells. You're either in the middle of a shell or you're in the middle on a single crochet and the shell is next. And it will always shift and then you just have to worry about these ridges every time that you're doing every other row. And that's what makes it kind of easy. So let's begin again. So I'm gonna fold down. See how it's attached? This is a single crochet and I can either skip two, one and two or it's the third one over whatever you want to do to visualize it. So that's gonna be my three, sorry my five 
double crochets right into that same spot. I really want to give you ideas for how you can look at it and how you can think about this because this pattern is not that hard when you look at it from that perspective. So I can either skip two, one and two and single crochet into the next one or just physically look up and it's the middle one anyway of the double crochets and it's the back loop of that row. Okay, so just continue, continue. so one, two, go into the back loop of the third one over and that's obviously the one that aligns that one as well. So please do this all the way for round number five. So as you come all the way back around you're gonna end up with your five shells and remember that you started off with the single crochet and you're just going to join it then to the single crochet with the first single, or uh, with the slip stitch to the first single crochet just like that and that was round number five. So we're gonna start on round number six. So what do you think you have to do? The only difference of rounds four, five, sorry three, four, five and six is the difference of how we're starting. Sometimes we're in the middle of the shell, sometimes we're the single crochet in between the shells. That's the only difference but the instructions are pretty much the same and so it's just a matter of how you're starting. So round number six we're gonna create these ridges again. Do you think that we're gonna pin them down just like we did before? Absolutely. So let's uh, begin to do the first one and we're going to start off with round number six and it's one, chain up one and one single crochet into the first one. So we're gonna go to the front loops, single crochet. So we're just gonna do front loop, single crochet all in the next shell. Okay, there's nothing to pin down in that one and you can see that there's nothing to pin down because the shell is up. It's only when you get narrower is that when you're gonna do the pinning right where I'm pinching there. So let's just do that. So we got one in a row. So we got two single crochet front, front loop single crochet. This is three, four and five and technically I don't even need to count it. I can see it. So all I'm gonna do, the next one is a single crochet. Here's this next one. So I wanna pin the middle one. Okay, just look up and pin the back loop of that one. Okay, that's the ridge and the front loop of that one single crochet right in the back and that'll pin it down into position. Okay, so the next five are single crochet front loops. So one, two, three, four and five just like that. Okay, and I'm gonna pinch down now on the next one. So just fold it up, get that middle one back loop only of that one and front loop only of that other row in behind and pinch it together for a single crochet and continue to do that. So continue to do that all the way for round number six and I'll see you back here in just a moment. So I'm coming all the way back around and I'm just finalizing off the last one here. I'm just looking, I'm looking for signs. I'm also a little bit counting, you know, whatever it takes in order for you to do this effectively. So I'm doing my last shell, front uh, loop, single crochet and this is my last one and I can see it's my last one as well and where I started here is the single crochet and I'm just gonna join it with the single crochet. So that concludes off how to do rounds number four, sorry three, four, five and six. So what I want you to do now is that I want you to continue to do that. So you can reverse this video and go back to number three and I need you to get from the top ridge about nine and a half inches. So you're gonna need a tape measure and go nine and a half inches just continuing to repeat three, four, five and six and that'll take you to nine and a half. It'll be approximate if your gauge is slightly off but I need you to end on round number six so that we can continue then to then start to shape the tail. So you're gonna notice that these ridges are gonna start really taking effect. You're gonna notice the three dimensional look and it's really quite cool. So can please continue that. I'll see you at the end of nine and a half inches of repeating three, four, five and six until it is nine and a half and I'll see you back here in just a moment. When I last left you I had you repeating rows three, four, five and six until it got to nine and a half inches which you see here. Just for the record I repeated that five times in order to make that happen and that's what you see. What I realized as well is that because you're doing this kind of uh, ridge work really it's the double crochets building on top of each other so you think it would grow quicker than it does but the reality is it's kind of sandwiching itself together in order to create the look that you see here and you can see here it looks really quite stunning. So let's move along. We're gonna start doing the shaping of the tail and moving our way down toward the bottom fin. So we're gonna make our way down the bottom of the tail and now we have to start off and this is the waist area and now we're gonna go on to the tail. So we're gonna still work on the back ridge just like you see here in order to get started 
just like this. Now the shell work there's five stitches and then you'll notice that in the beginning it says skip one stitch. That's the single crochet stitch that you're gonna skip every time. So you're just really con kinda concentrating on the shell at this point. Also it says in the instructions that the chain two at the beginning of a round never counts as a stitch and that's a good thing to know. So let's chain two. Doesn't count as anything. It's more of a builder. So you're just gonna immediately come into the next one and it's gonna be the back um, the back loop okay and you're gonna work on the back loop. So just kind of fold it down and you're going to uh, half double crochet yourself five half double crochets in a row. So that was one, two, three, four, making sure I'm getting all my plies in there. That was four and five. Now that takes me across that shell and the next one is a single crochet that you can see here and we're gonna skip that. Just fold it down so you're skipping that stitch there and just moving in half double crocheting the next five in a row. So one, two, and three, four, and five. And then again you skip the next single crochet and then go to the next shell. So skip one and go. So please do that all the way around for the beginning of the tail, round number one. When you get all the way back around just join it to the top of the beginning chain two. Now we're gonna start rounds two and three which are identical to each other and we're gonna repeat rounds two and three several times throughout doing the taper of the tail. It's kind of unusual. Let me show you what to do. Now rounds two and three are identical and I'm gonna do just show you one time and then you're gonna do both. So you're gonna chain two. Counts as nothing. So the first half double crochet is gonna be in the space between. Okay, space between. This is unusual. So it's gonna be space in between. Then just ram your fingers and you can see it and go into the next space in between for half double crochet. So space in between the next one. So don't go into a stitch. Just go into the spaces in between the half double crochets. I need you to go all the way around, join it with the top of the chain two and then begin again with doing half double crochets with the space in between. Please do that for rounds two and three. I'll see you back here after that. So here we have round number four. So round number four is the starting of the taper and it's gonna start tapering off like this. So what's gonna happen is that we're gonna start off and we're just gonna put half double crochets in between the two and you're gonna do that 13 times and so roughly about this point here we're gonna put two together so it's gonna start typing here. But then it says to repeat the pattern of decreasing like that. So the next one will be roughly about here. So there'll be two together here. Then it will be here and then the final two are right here. So all of the tapering is gonna happen in four different sections. So it's gonna be here, here, here and one right at the back. So let's begin round number four. So let's begin round number four. Round number four is gonna be the starting of the taper and you're gonna notice it's gonna taper in five different spots. So we're gonna start up and we're gonna put a half double crochet in between and you're gonna go 13. It's gonna take you roughly to about here. You're gonna put two together. Then go another 13. Put two together and it'll approximately be around here in the back. Then you do it again. It'll approximately be around here. There put two together and then the next one will be roughly around here and then the final is gonna be together. So there's gonna be five pivoting points of where it's gonna do the taper right to, be, to begin this pattern. So let's begin. We're gonna start up and we're gonna chain two. One and two. Remember that counts as nothing and we're just gonna half double crochet in the space like we had been for 13 in a row. So that was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and 13. So there's your 13 in. So the next two are gonna be two half double crochets together. So wrap the hook going into the next space, pull through. Wrap that hook again and going into the very next space after that, pull through. You have five loops on the hook, wrap and pull through all five. So these two just became one. So you're gonna do 13 again of half double crochets in a row and then do a half double crochet together. 13 in a row, half double crochet together and if your math is right, the very final two stitches will be coming together and you'll join it with the top of the chain two. So please continue to do that same patterning going all the way around 
and where I'm gonna start now is to put my 13 in a row. So I'm now at two and I'll see you at the end. So as I come around in number four I have two spaces left and those are going to be the two half double crochets that come together if you're keeping in count with your pattern. So just join it to the top of the chain two to finalize round number five or round number five or four. So let's begin round number five and six again. Very very simple again. It's just like the th the third the second and third row. We're just gonna chain up two counts as nothing and just do one half double crochet into each of the spaces. Please do this for rounds number five and six. The same thing is exactly what you already know. So just one half double crochet into each space going all the way around for rows number five and six and I'll see you back here in just a moment. So here we are on round number seven. So I've got five and six complete and this is what it looks like so far. So number seven we're gonna do another decrease. So last time we did a decrease after 13. This time it's gonna be 12. The next time we do a decrease then it'll be 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4 all the way down to four in order to get the taper. But I'll explain a little more, more about that. But I want you to see that there's a, a decrease that is consistent. So every third time you do a row it's gonna be a decrease. So this one it's going to be 12 in a row. So let's just chain up two doesn't count as anything and we're gonna start then with half double crochet in. Okay so let's do 12 in a row. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11 and 12. So this takes you then to the first taper. So then now we're gonna just put the next two together. So half double crochet the next two together just like we had before and then it's gonna be another 12. Put two together then another 12 and that'll take you right to the very end of this revolution. Please do round number seven just like I showed you. So I'm all the way back around and I just joined it to the beginning chain two. So the last one was two together. So now rounds number eight and nine are the same as rounds the second and third. It's just chain up uh, two. Remember that it doesn't count as anything and uh, just again, again going in between the spaces of the half double crochet for one half double crochet. And you're gonna do that for rounds number eight and nine. Very simple and when we come back then we'll do another decrease and then we're gonna leave the rest of the decreasing for you in order for you to get to the tail and then I'll show you what to do from that point forward. So please continue to do this for rounds number eight and nine. Okay rows eight and nine are now done. Now on the instructions it says tenth row now it's gonna be eleven in a row and then two together and then we do eleven and twelve which is the same as what we've just done is just half double crochet into each space. So what I wanna show you here and I'm gonna leave the rest for you in order to get to the bottom of the tail area just like here. So what's gonna happen here is that you are now on row uh, the decreasing. So what we're gonna happen here is that we're gonna be on a num number eleven here for row number ten. Okay so this is round number 10. And so what you have to do is just do a decrease. So there will be 11 in a row and then a decrease. 11 in a row and then a decrease. And then what you have to do is that you have to add in plus two of just H D C in the space. And you're gonna do plus two after each one of these instructions. Once you get those uh, three lines done then you're gonna then move down. And you'll do then 10 in a row and then a decrease. 10 in a row and then decrease and then add your two just half double crochet uh, rounds as normal. So what I want you to do is that I want you to just to follow this all the way down and the goal is to have 25 stitches left at the very end. This is what this means. So every time you do a decrease just like so you're removing five stitches out of the, the mix. So what I want you to do is continue to decrease and just work your way down and it says that in the instructions too and then once we get then to the bottom base area is that we just have two more rounds to do and we'll be finalizing it right here where the fin right here where the fin actually attaches there and then we gotta do the fin next. So let's uh, continue to do that. When I see you back we'll be at the base of this tail. So to finish up the tail I have just done my decrease of four here and the final two revolutions will just be one uh, uh, half double crochet into each space and then that concludes the tail. So once you get this decrease of four in a row and then decrease four in a row then decrease 
the next two are then the final of the tail. So that's where I am at this point. So the next uh, two rounds after I've done the decrease with four in a row is just going to be one half double crochet into each going all the way around. Please do that and I'm gonna meet you at the end of this tail then when we are going to start doing the fin work in order to make this work. So just one half double crochet into each space going all the way around for two rounds and then that's it. So I'm now done the bottom part here and I just left with a small little hole and that's it. So what I want to do is that I'm just going to just trim this off and I wanna sew this shut. So I'm just gonna pull this strand through and kinda just lock it, just pull on it and just kinda weave it in. And what I'm gonna do with a separate piece of string is that I'm going to do it so that it's sealed shut with the whip stitch. Now here's the thing. The back side has your your seam. So what I want to do is that I wanna make sure that this front side stays nice and flat and uh, what I'm gonna just do then is that I'm gonna sew this along the side. So once I determine that this is the flat side it can never turn. So you gotta make sure that that um, seam on the back is right where you want it to be because you don't want that fin to be out of out of alignment. So let's show you how to do that. What I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna sew the tail shut. Okay so just right at the base and we're gonna work with that later. So I'm going in order of the instructions. So I'm just gonna create a slip knot on this side of the strand and this allows me to lock it in nicely. So what I want to do is that I wanna go up and through both layers at the same time. Just across and before I pull it all the way through I want to insert the needle into the loop like that. And that'll lock that on top of itself. I want you to use this tail and just kind of put it down over top and every time you go up through, so you go through one side then you go through the other. It's called the whip stitch is that you are whip stitching this together and because you've laid down this strand here it's gonna trap it into position underneath. Okay so you have a nice edge just like so. Once you get to the other side all you're just gonna do just make sure you get that last one in and I want you to create a little knot. Okay, so insert the, loop, the um, needle through and loop it through like so. Now here's this thing. So this is the strand that's coming up from the original string and it's been hiding all the way across. We can trim that out. It's gone. So if you put the hook in and out of a project three times it'll always stay in a position because a project can never stretch in three ways at one time in order for things to fall out. So you want to glide the hook underneath the stitches and it's gonna go in between some fibers. Just wanna take my time doing this. So I'm just gonna go to about an inch, just glide through and then I'm gonna go in this direction I just came from. Okay and go back in the other way. This will be the uh, second pass. You want a total of three passes. So that's number two and going back in the other direction finally for number three. And by doing that you're trapping that strand so it never comes out and because this is for kids you don't want strands hanging out anyway. So then you can trim it right down into the project and you'll never see where you stopped and started. That's what it looks like. So now it's time to create the tail. So what's gonna happen is this is a solid piece and what we're gonna do is we're gonna start on one side and we're gonna progressively get smaller till we get to the center and then we're gonna progressively get bigger. So it's just one complete unit going all the way across. Now do you see how it's tapering just like so? That's because it's sewn nicely and tapered to here but this actually will appear like a piece that will probably appear like this. Okay. So you gotta make sure that you're kinda watching that, that you're not actually gonna see the shape until you actually do the sewing when you bunch all this in together and it causes it to make it look like it's in. Now what you have here four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, all the way to 15 is the uh, decreasing in order to do it. So we're gonna start off bigger and then the, what here is showing is that one single crochet into the back loop and then in row number five it's we're gonna end too early. The next one then is one uh, single crochet into the back loop and then we're gonna next row we're gonna end early. So I just did it like this because it says to repeat it for a certain amount of times. I like to write things out so that I know what's happening in the pattern and then once I get to the middle point then I will write the next numbers and then we're gonna do the increase as we come on the other side. You know whatever works for you. This is the way that I learn and hopefully it makes sense for you. So let's begin. We're going to start off with the slip knot and then we're gonna chain 27. Remember the one on the hook never counts as one. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 
8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, and 27. So there's my starting chain. So as per the instructions in row number one it says one single crochet into each uh, single crochet across. So just from second chain from the hook so just go one and two count the second one, turn it over, get the back hump of that that chain and just single crochet. Once you get the first back hump the rest of them will stay upside down and you'll have a nice perfect finish then on the edge of your fin. So just one single crochet in each chain going all the way across. I'm coming up to the final chain and I'm just doing a single crochet. So this is the outside part of the fin. So now I'm gonna turn my work and I'm gonna go for row number two. Row number two and three is the repeat pattern. So think about this as the end of the tail. We're gonna taper toward the middle of the tail and then taper back out. So what's gonna happen is that on row number two we're going to just uh, do it the same every time. So we're gonna chain up one and it says S E B L. That means single crochet in the back loop. So I'm chaining one and I'm just gonna go to the back loop only. I've already explained what these loops are uh, when we did the uh, top of the outfit. And so you're just gonna do one single crochet into each back loop going all the way to, or down. So every time you have to repeat row number two you're just putting in a single crochet into the back loop all the way. So you don't have to do any decreasing or increasing uh, for this one and that, that makes it quite easy to be able to follow. So this is row number two. Please do so all the way across. So I've now just single crocheted in the back loop all the way across. I can tell you firsthand this side here is going to be where it attaches to the body. This side will be the end of the tail. I can tell that by the instruction. So we're gonna turn our work and go for row number three. So row number three is another repeat. So we're gonna go two and three, two and three, two and three all the way until we get to the size that we need and I'll explain that more in a bit. So in row number three we're gonna chain up one in back loop single crochet all the way down but we are going to stop when two uh, single crochets are left on this row. This will allow us to start doing a decrease. So we're just single crocheting in the back loop and this is gonna happen each and every time we do repeating of row number three. So I'm just working my way across, minding my own business. Um, the back loops create the fin look and the texture of a mermaid tail, well at least a pretend one and uh, it's kind of a really kind of a cool concept. So all I'm just doing is that I can either count but I wouldn't bother and I would actually just look for the final two that you need to do in order to make it work. So this is kind of improvisation in some kind of way. Nobody likes to count that much. You just wanna do the work and get it done. But you will have to keep track of every time that you do this because you do have to repeat it a certain amount of times. So I have three stitches left. So one, two, and three. So I'm gonna do the next one and that's it. Done. So I wanna leave these two empty. So now I'm gonna turn my work and it says rows four to 15 and that's where my notes come into play and I'll show you what I did. So for row number four all we're just doing is one single crochet into the back loop all the way across. See you're going all the way back to where it attaches to the body. So there's nothing to degrease on there. It's only when we come in this direction is that we're gonna stop too early. So row number four is just one back loop single crochet across and then the next one row number five is that we're gonna come back this way and we're gonna end two stitches early. Okay row number six we're gonna go back just back loop and then we're gonna come back for row number seven and we're gonna end two more early. So this is gonna continue to taper off kinda of like this just like in that angle and you wanna do that all the way until you get rows number 15 done. Please do that and I'll see you back at the end of this and then I'm going to then pick up on row number 16. So just to reiterate it's chain one and it's a single crochet in the back loop only and because I'm on number four which is a repeating of number two every time I need to repeat number two it's just one single crochet in the back loop. So there's nothing to decrease. I'm only worried about decreasing whenever I'm on this side of the tail. Make sense? Hopefully so. I'll see you at the end of row number 15 and I will pick up on number 16 where we're gonna be almost in the center of the tail and then I'll show you how to increase once again. So this is what it looks like then I completed row number 15. So what we need to do is that we're going to start increasing. So we've just now got narrow. Now you're seeing to yourself oh that doesn't look like the shape but if you start buckling everything in you can start seeing it. So what I want you to do is that we're gonna start then increasing. 
to do an increase then on this is that row number 16 it says to chain three and then single crochet second chain from the hook. So what I want you to do is that I want you to turn your work and let's begin. So we're gonna chain three. One, two, three. No, this is not a double crochet. This is the chain in order to get it to go bigger. Second chain from the hook I want you just to insert in the first two just like this. Single crochet and then the remaining what I need you to do is going back to the back loop again going all the way back across. So you can't do really the back loop on the first chain when you start but you certainly can get the ones that you are already established. This is row number 16. So every time we need to increase we need to think about that at the beginning of chaining three then turning or, or turn and then chain three in order to complete that in order to get the additional size that we need. And you go all the way back to the very beginning like so. This is row number 16. So let's uh, just finish off this row and let's turn our work. So you can see now it's gotten back bigger once again. Turning our wor work row number 17. So row number 17 is going to match exactly what you already have established. Okay so this is uh, row number 17 so chain up one back loop in the single crochet, single crochet back loop. So it's whenever we start row number uh, 16 all over again is that we have to then establish and chain three first. Just like I showed you. So this is just in the back loop. So it's just gonna get bigger and bigger as we get all the way to row number 27. Okay, so you're getting all the way. You're continuing now to do the back loops even on the new section because now you can physically see it and these are the back loops. So that was row number 17. So let's start and let's just show you one more time. So what I'm gonna do here on the paperwork is that we have to repeat these rows number 16 and 17 over and over. So 18 is just like so. So this is number 18 that we're about to start with. So we're gonna add your three. And then row number 20 we're gonna add three right at the very beginning plus three, plus three, and plus three. So then 19 is just one single crochet in the back loop only. Then row number 20 we're adding three then coming back and then row number 21 is, is just one single crochet in each. So we wanna make sure that we're kinda maintaining exactly what we have. So to start up row number 18 just to reiterate, reiterate our point. So we're gonna chain up three. So this is three. Second chain from the hook go into the back loop only of that chain one and two and then you're back on the regular project and then it's just back loop all the way across. So that is chain, uh, that is uh, row number 18 going across and then row number 19 which is then next is just one uh, single crochet in the back loop all the way across and then row number uh, what is that number 20 we're gonna then add three at the start again and make it even bigger. So please continue to do that same process going all the way to row number 27 and I'll see you at that moment. Okay so this is what the tail looks like now. It's as I predicted remember when I drew it I drew it kind of like a crown. That's what it looks like. It's nice and flat on one side. This is row number 27 that I just finished with. So I wanna turn it one more time. We're gonna go round number, row number 28. Just chain three as you normally did before. Second chain from the hook again. And what we want to do is that we want to finish this off on this row when we get to the end. So just coming back across in the back loops only again and what I want you to do is just uh, fasten off as soon as you get to the other side of this and then we're gonna attach this to the main body. So please do that all the way across and uh, fasten off and I'm gonna use a fresh piece of yarn in order to um, attach this as well. You don't really have to if you just leave an extra long string um, when you go to go finish it off and don't cut it then you can do that as well. And you know what you might as well do that anyway. It just saves you time from having to get more string out. So I will see you back at here in just a moment when I finish off this row. So row number 28 is done. I now have this. So what I'm gonna just do is grab some extra strands, uh, strand here and then cut. And I'm gonna use that whole thing to be able to sew it to the body. Just take this and just pull this yarn through and all the way through in order to lock it into position. So let's pull back the body now and the body's just here and I'm gonna lay it down. So you're gonna notice one immediate thing. The tail is much bigger than where you're sewing. So what we have to do is that we have to bunch this all up in, 
in here. So because you've done it like this it's gonna do like accordion shape and you can just accordion shape this to here. So what I like to do is I like to use stitch markers and I'm gonna pull those up now and I'll show you what I'm gonna do with those. So what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna just use a stitch marker. It's just spare yarn and I'm going to insert my hook into the side of the tail or tail fin and I'm just gonna go to the body and I just wanna be able to put it in so I can get the strand through. It's easier if you can kinda position this before you sew because then once you start sewing and then you realize you're off the track it's gonna be a big deal. So then I'm gonna take the one that I'm about to start with on this side and I'm gonna go on the other side. So all the thing, all of it in the middle has to then bunch up in between these two spots. Again if you have a better way of doing things that's completely your business. And then what I want to do is grab one more strand here and I wanna attach it right in the middle. So this kinda will hold everything into position as you're sewing. So let's attach the middle strand. So I'm just looking roughly in the middle and then into roughly to the middle of where you need to go. This is the way that I did the kit size version as well and it worked out well for me to be able to position everything. So just kind of slide that yarn through and remember this is only temporary so you don't you don't have to use any good yarn for this. I just grabbed yarn under the waistband. I just had some extra sewing strands left over from the snuggle sack series that I did. Try not to grab any yarn that's not part of it. Sometimes you just gotta have patience. Okay, so what I'm gonna just do is just tie this into little, um, just one over. It kinda will secure it. Nothing too drastic. This is the middle. And then this is the outside. So as I'm moving along with my darning needle what I want to do is that I wanna create that accordion shape here so all of this can be sewn into position. So there's a lot going on here and I just really need to watch the edge. So watch how I do it. So that long strand that I had you do, I want you now to pull that up now and put that into a darning needle. And we might as well secure this right at the very edge. So don't worry about the stitch marker right at this moment. I just want you to concentrate on getting this into position. What I want to do is if you're using any yarn that has plies, just make sure you try not to get your plies stuck into this darning needle because it'll be impossible to get that out. And I just want you to whip stitch. So just over and under kind of an idea. No big deal. So now my first one's into position. I can remove this out. And you're thinking to yourself, well you could have probably did that without a stitch marker. Yeah you could have. I just don't, I just don't like mistakes. I just don't like to have to go back on things and uh, realize that I've screwed up. So I've tried not to do too much like that. So what I have to do is that I have to get all of this sewn into this little area here. So I want to kind of accordion shape everything like so. And what I'm gonna do is that I'm just gonna glide my needle. So just take the needle and just glide it along the top edge. If you have a better way, again that's completely up to you. And I'm grabbing it so that it goes to the middle. And what that's gonna do is that it's gonna bunch all of that. I'm grabbing all the top sections. Do you see that? Actually I might as well just get that one too. Just grabbing all the top sections so it forces it to do the accordion shape. There you go, got it. So it got right to the middle one and I'm gonna stop. So I'm only gonna concentrate on this side of the tail. So I'm just gonna pull that needle or that yarn all the way through. See and that just brought it, everything together so it's now easier to work with. And now I'm going to do the whip stitching technique of into the body and then over back into the, to the tail. Now because I'm using the same color yarn it's very forgiving if you don't get it exactly right. If you're using a different color well um, that's a different story. So what I want to just do is over under kind of idea work my way across the tail. Depending on the usage um, I like to just sew along both sides. So once I get this side done I'll just turn it over and just use the same strand and I'll do the other side to the other side. It's just something that's peace of mind for me. But you can see how I did that and gathered everything together in order to kind of get it to work in order to create that beautiful tail shape. 
kind of did this with the, the um, regular child size. So I've kind of experienced with doing this uh, particular step. Um, you kind of learn as you do projects and you always use your knowledge then for further projects. So I don't want to trim my yarn at this moment. I want to do the other side. So I'm going to do that. Just insert the needle through and I'm going to flip it so that I can see the other side on only this half side. And what I want to do is just in the half I want to use this side and just come down see and just grab those ones that are sticking out. It makes me feel better. Therefore if your child especially if this is a photo prop ever turns over you know what it's not a deal breaker. So I'm making sure I'm going into the body and the tail at the same time. And again you won't see this this stitch work on the other side. And just go to the middle. Okay. So now I'm just going to poke this through and it, it, it'll be at the middle point coming in. So let's turn it back over. So I'm secure and happy with the way this looks on the other side. Okay. So now I'm going to then take out the stitch marker because I've already got it. It's already secured at the halfway point. So now what I'm going to do is that I'm going to do exactly what I did before. So the ones that are kind of facing up I'm just going to glide across it's like an accordion and gather them right to the very end. See? Isn't that pretty cool? And then I'm going to go across into the body. So just go I'm going to get rid of the stitch marker in just a moment. Get rid of that out. It'd be devastating if I ever cut a strand that was part of that. So just watch that. So I want to go right into the edge here. Okay, so like I did before, I'm just going to whip stitch. So just going in and then I start gathering them across the way. I have to say the designers did an amazing job with these tails. Even the child size version of making the actual flipper or the, the tail fin actually very believable um, according to what we think a mermaid's tail should look like. Um, I was really quite impressed with that. It is the final tail that really makes the difference on these particular projects. So if you, you cheapen up on the design and you, you do something very simplistic it's a lot different for, versus having one that actually looks believable. Uh, just in the wow sense. So now that I've got that sewn in I'm going to just stick my hook to the other side, turn it over and then just work my way on this side. And like I did before just kind of whip stitching this side in. I'm looking for the ones that are popping up and it just peace of mind of just making sure those are nice and secure. This is meant for a baby. I can't see a lot of um, too much action going on with these things as far as dragging them across the room. Um, you never know. Um, you just want to be nice and snug with it so the tail's never a, a factor for being a deal breaker with these. So that's it. So the tail's now officially attached. So I'm now on the back side. So what I'm going to just do then is that I'm going to tie my strand. So I'm just going to go in. And remember what I said before about how we finished off the tail. So that's now secured. If I glue, if I just glide the hook in three different directions. So one going back in the other direction in a different spot but very close to it. It's a different set of fibers that's why. This is two and three just like that. You can then hide in that strand. You also want to take care of the strand on the fin itself. And this is the starting one that we had started with. 
and because we finished up at the top you use that one the final one to do the sewing. So that's what, not one you have to worry about at this point. So again in and out three times. Just stay with inside the fibers underneath the stitches. Don't stay to the outside because then you'll see it. So you got one, two, fell off, two, got one more to go. Don't be lazy Mike, get it done. And three. Chances are for me this will end up in a donation bin somewhere. So I want to make sure it's done properly so I can throw it in the donation bin and I don't have to worry about a child ever being worried about loose ends. So that's how you complete the bottom area of the tail and now the body is now complete. The top is now complete and now it's time for the bra area or the top. We'll talk to you in a bit and we'll let's get started on that next. So No Mermaid is complete without her bra top and this is actually just a little bit of a shell shaping at the top and then we need to complete one and then the one works then into the other. They're not actually separate so we have to watch for that. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna start you off on one side and then we're gonna continue along and we'll get the other side done at the same time. So using your same size hook, same yarn. If you want to change your yarn color now is the time to do it. You know Mermaid's uh, um, bra usually never matches um, their outfit and so I'm gonna change a color just for fun. Okay so let's begin working on the shell. And this is the bra top. I think orange complements the blue quite nicely so I'm gonna use an orange. So what I'm gonna use, um, I'm gonna chain 12. That's gonna get us to start. So the, both of the bra tops are the same, both cups. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. And so what I need you to do is that we're gonna start doing the shaping right away. So in the very first one what we're gonna do is that we're going to second chain from the hook. You're going to single crochet and then you're gonna single crochet into the next three. So one, two, and three. Now it says to do half double crochets into the, into the next seven. There's only seven left so it's just half double crochet right into the end, end of your chain. Just like this. So you can count it or you can trust yourself. So we're starting the shaping right away which makes it quite easy to follow. So the only difference at cup one and two is that we're gonna fasten off with then once we get one of the layers done uh, with this but then on number two is that we are going to start in a different position. And so we have to then be conscientious of that. So that is row number one. So you see it's more narrow here than in a sticker here. So we're gonna turn our work and go for row number two. Row number two and three are going to be a repeat pattern but we're gonna establish that first before we start telling you to do the repeat. So in row number two it says chain two does not count as a, ch as a half double crochet. So don't worry about it. So that's just a builder. So what we're gonna do is that we're gonna half double crochet in the back loop only. Okay back into the back loop only for seven in a row. You'll need to count these. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Now there's four stitches left. The next three are just gonna be single crochet back loop only. So one, two, and three. And then the very final one is just gonna be a slip stitch. So going into the back loop, pull it through and through. So that was row number two. So let's turn our work and do number three. Number three we're gonna chain up one first. The first one is gonna be a slip stitch into the back loop only. So just slip it. The next three are gonna be single crochet back loop only. So it's just what you've just done but just in reverse. Okay and then the next seven which is the only ones left is just gonna be half double crochet. And what's gonna do into the back loop? So what's gonna happen is that this side that I'm heading to is gonna be bigger than the side that I'm coming from. You'll notice that as you continue. And you're gonna do the same uh, idea for the second one as well but it's the second one that you don't wanna fasten off when you get it completely done. So okay, so what we have to do is repeat two and three, uh, three more times. So go two, three, two, three, two, three. So turning our work, do you remember what to do? Chain up two, doesn't count as anything and then immediately half double crochet into the back loop for seven times. So one, and then moving to the next one. So do the seven in a row. 
this is two, three, four, five, six, and seven. The next three are gonna be uh, single crochet in the back loop. So one, two, and three. And you have one stitch left. Guess what that is? That's right, it's a slip stitch. So that was row number two. Turning work, let's do number three. Just chain up one, single crochet, or sorry, slip stitch into the first one, into the back loop, single crochet, back loop only for three, one, two, and three, and the remaining are half double crochets in the back loop. So that's repeating of one more, of two and three. So you just have to, if you're following along, just like you see, we just have to repeat two and three two more times and basically you will have a shell uh, cup complete for one side. So continue to do that and I'll see you here in just a moment and I'll show you what to do next. So as I complete then, I got rows two and three done uh, a repeating of three times. I just have to make sure I end up back over here. So we have to repeat row number two one more time. So it's chaining up two and then it's half double crochet into the first seven. So continue to do that and then you need to slip stitch then to the end. So the first seven are half double crochets, the next three are single crochets all in the back loop and then single crochet here. And I'll meet you at the top and we're gonna do something at the very top. And this is a shell number one. You have to do very similar ideas to shell number two and I'll cover that in just a moment. So in shell number one, this is what it looks like. So we have a nice big fat bottom. We have a nice uh, um, tight top. So now to finish this one off, we're just gonna chain up two and we're gonna put two half double crochets right into the corner. So one and two. And we need to get five half double crochets across here and then the final one will have two half double crochets. So we're just gonna do one and it just look to the rows and two the third one should be near to the center. This is three, this is four, and five. And then the final of the edge should have two half double crochets in there. So one and two. So what I want you to do is that I want you to do the same idea then for the second cup. This one's gonna fasten off but on the second one I don't want you to fasten off and I'll meet you at this point in the second one and I'll show you what to do from this point. So please weave in this end uh, just like using darning needle technique and then I'll see you back here in just a moment. So if this is your second shell, what we need to do is just almost get it done just the way it was done here. So we're gonna chain up two, okay, and you want to put in two half double crochets right in the corner just like we had done before. And then we're gonna squeeze in five half double crochets along the top here. So one, and two. The third one should be very close to the center. This is three and then four, five like so and then there's gonna be two half double crochets right in the very end. But I don't want you to fasten off at this moment. We still have one more thing we need to do with this before we fasten off and I want you to grab the other one Okay, making sure your right sides are up. Just look to these ridges. That'll give you a really good indication. And before you do anything else, I need you to chain two. Okay, so one and two. And we're gonna slip stitch it to the top corner here. Okay, just slip stitch. So just going in, pulling it through and through. And then going back across that chain, I need you to slip stitch. And that'll thicken up that chain just one extra time in order to make it look complete and just go right to the very end and slip stitch. Now you can fasten off. Okay, so this is what it will look like at the top piece here. And then what we're gonna do then is that I'm gonna fasten this off here. Okay, so I'm just gonna pull that through and I'll fasten that off off camera just using my darning needle technique. I don't wanna uh, wreck that middle look so when I go to fasten and hide, I want to hide it into this side here. I don't wanna hide it in the middle. And what we need to do with the extra yarn here is that just create a slip knot and we need to attach the bottom pieces together. And this will create the top. So the strings that we use to in order to put this onto the child does not go through the base of this at all. So we're just gonna go right into a corner and right into a corner of the other one here and insert the slip knot onto the hook or onto the needle. Pull it nice and tight 
and then I'm going to fasten it off using my techniques that I normally do. So I'm gonna fasten off on the inner side so that it looks pretty much hidden. And remember use that, that guiding technique of going in and out three times in order to really hide that in really quite effectively. Okay, so I'll leave that for you and then we're gonna start doing the ties next and I'm gonna need you to grab a tape measure in order to do that and we're gonna make the ties and that's basically the end of doing this costume at that point. I'll see you there in just a moment. So let's create the neck ties. So the both of them are gonna be the same and it says to do 17 inches across. So what I would do if, it, if I were you or it were me, I would actually make sure that I would count the first time going across. So what I want to do is that I want to make sure I leave an extra long tail here so I can sew that in afterward. And what I want to do is just go into one corner. You can go into one or the other. And what I would do is count out these chains as you go. So you're gonna slip stitch that one in so that it's attached. Okay, so now I'm just gonna count. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. I've not done this before. So that's 30. Okay, that's not quite 17 yet. So that was 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, it's an even 45. So I'm gonna say that next time I do this, so the next time I do this, I'm gonna attach it here, slip stitch, and then chain 45. And then once I've got my chaining of 45, I'm just going to single crochet myself all the way back. And let's just, just check the directions one more time. It says to slip stitch into each one, but I'm going to single crochet. It makes it a little bit thicker, but if you would like to slip stitch it across your chain, that's completely up to you. That's how you do it. So if you want to single crochet it, just as normal. And if you want to slip stitch it, just going in, just pulling it through and through, and that'll also thicken it up. But that's uh, up to you on the way that you would like to do it for yourself. I kind of like it a little bit thicker. That's just my own personal taste. Again, it's your creativity. So you're just gonna go all the way to the end and then you're gonna fasten off, weave in your ends, and then repeat the other side for the top. Now the bottom is done slightly different and so I want you to do two of the top tech, uh, ties first and then we'll cover then doing the bottom. When you get all the way to the back, then you're just gonna slip stitch it to the, to the corner and then you'll have that as your finish. So just uh, cut your yarn and just pull through. And then you're gonna be weaving in this end here with the darning needle and the other end on the other side. Okay, so please do that for the other side of the top and I'm gonna meet you back and I'll have these hidden at the same time. So let's do then, we're gonna do the side ties. So the side ties are interesting. So this is gonna be the front side. I determined that this is what you're gonna look at when you're looking at the child. So let's turn it over and let's get the back side. So what we need to do is that we need to start attaching. So I'm gonna use an extra long tail so I can hide that in afterward. And here's the trick. So you have to count down four stitches. See this, where this is joined? So one, two, three, four, and then count two rows in. So I'm gonna go right here. And I'm just going to attach it so that you can't see where it's joined on the other side and just gliding it through like that. And I do a slip stitch. Do you remember how many chains I did for um, to getting my 17 inches? It was 45. So it's exactly the same thing. So what I want to do is then on the other side I'm gonna count down four and then coming in and I'm gonna attach here. This allows the shells to uh, dangle nicely on the child without uh, appearing to be um, um, stretched and also it's really more photographic and not really functional anyway. So, so I got 45. So one, two, three, four, five, and then I'm gonna just do my single crochets down. If you do want to do slip stitching, that's up to you. And then I'm gonna do the same for both sides. I'll leave the rest of this for you and then I'll come back and I'll show you the final results. So this here is the top. I've sewn it into the same position on both sides. Let's turn it back over and this is the front side of the top just like there. Okay, so this will wrap around the baby and then you'll just uh, do a nice tie. This will go around the neck. You do a nice tie there and voila, you've done the bra shape there. 
So this is going to conclude today's tutorial with doing the Wee Mermaid um, crochet costume and it's actually more of a, a photo prop but also the tail is amazing too. I have to say that I love the tail and the way that it worked out. I love the stitching. Oh I still have a loose end uh, to get in at the end but this is just a wonderful uh, example of crochet and I think that you'll enjoy it at the same time. So until next time I'm Mikey on behalf of the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. Have a super day. We'll see you again real soon. Bye bye.